More than half a million people who live in Los Angeles got a raise last weekend, making the city the latest testing ground in the drive to boost incomes of bottom-rung workers. So this is all about the minimum wage, the artificial minimum wage, and what it does to jobs. And to tell us more about it, an expert in that area, Rob Wilson, employment trends expert and president of Employ Co. USA. Rob, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on this morning. You bet. So what do you make of the uh, new minimum wage, not just in L.A., but uh, all over the country? We, we had something similar just happen in St. Louis, I think Dallas. Uh, what's going on with the minimum wages, and what impact does this usually have on business? Sure, and you just saw that Minneapolis just uh, just voted last Thursday as well to uh, raise their minimum wage. So uh-huh. It's, it's uh, you know, where we're, uh, the recent University of Washington study showed, uh, kind of uh, did a look back over the last couple of years at Seattle. And uh, what Seattle found was that there was actually a 9% reduction in hours of, of the people that were paid minimum wage. So that, that average worker lost about $125 a month. Why don't people see that? Because they're not business owners, maybe? Yeah, you know, and what's happening is you're, you've got, uh, you, in, many, in Seattle, it was 5,000 less jobs were created. So you're, what's happened is that the, the businesses, both small businesses and large businesses, they're just offering less hours for, uh, for the minimum wage workers. So it, and when you look at Los Angeles, Los Angeles versus the state, where you see this effect on a on a bigger basis is where the uh, where a city such as Seattle raises minimum wages, but the surrounding counties or suburbs or even the state don't raise it at the same rate. Yeah, I don't know. We keep seeing this effort, Rob. We're talking to Rob Wilson, uh, employment trends expert and president of is it Employ Co or Employ Company USA? Uh, Employ Co. Employ Co. Thanks. Okay, gotcha. And. <laughs> It seems common sense to maybe some of us who have owned businesses, have run businesses, have hired people, have had payrolls, that if somebody artificially raises your expenses and salary is an expense, that you've got to respond. If you're in, whether you're you're working for stockholders or you're working for your family, whatever it is, you've got to respond to an additional expense or expenditure and in the way it seems, Rob, we've got one example after another that you're just going to have to either cut jobs or cut hours. Right. And you hear, you hear arguments on both sides. Uh, I was on a show last week and a caller said, oh, well, you know, you've got these CEOs making, you know, zillions of dollars. Yep. Why don't they make less? But, you know, what we're really talking about here is your, your local restaurant, you know, not – you know, you can you can talk about McDonald's, but you're talking about your local pizza place. It, you know, as his wages go up, they've got to raise the price of the of your cheeseburger or your pizza because the, your your expenses are up. Your margins in that industry are so thin to start with that, and and that's and the minimum wage. When you look at uh, you know in Los Angeles, for example, the biggest uh, the biggest effect are restaurants and retail trade. Sure, no, that makes sense, and of course you have <laughs> you have labor that's making very little and given a choice i would imagine that if they're educated enough they can understand that a raise would be terrific if you had a job but when you don't have a job it doesn't matter what the wage is right and to that business at some point as the businesses raise their prices does that especially on retail and on uh, on the hospitality and restaurants does that does that cheeseburger become too expensive that you can't afford to go there as often anymore because the, the, the price went up? If you had to guess, Rob, do you think this is a problem of education or politics? In other words, cities have to know we've had plenty of opportunities to observe what happens when you artificially raise wages. So it's got to be one or the other. You either know about it because you're educated and if you're running a big city, you have to be educated. If you're a politician, city council member, whatever, mayor. Or is, is this something that it's just politics or education? Which one is it? I think it's more politics at this sure. point. Because when you look at the statistics uh, across the country, the minimum wage employees represent uh, 2% of those are over the age of 25. So a lot of it's younger, and 2% are full-time. So, so the it's not that big of a, a block in who you're uh, across the country in the number of people. 
So you're you're affecting the amount of jobs that are created. You're uh, in Minneapolis. They're now doing a 90 day study to see if it makes sense and why 90 days. Why you know, who knows why it takes that long? Yep. To, to, does it make sense to have a, a lower wage for the younger generation because that's that's a big group big group of people. Well, at least they're it. studying it. I think that's encouraging. Right, because when you've got you know that 16, 18 year old high school kid, college kid that. You know, when the wages, when everyone's at, say, $15 an hour, are you going to hire a more experienced person? Or are you going to give the, uh, the, the summer, uh, the, you know, the high school kid or the college kid, are you going to give them a, them a shot or hire somebody older? We're talking to Rob Wilson, employment trends expert and president of EmployCo USA. Rob, to what extent, if any, does union pressure have on wages? And most unions, when you look across the country, uh, outside of the services union, which would be you know, typically they're your janitorial and your hospitality, outside of that, most unions, your wages are much higher than, than minimum wage. Yeah. And, and so do you want, as a, if you're trying to get people to join your union, and uh, all unions are preserving themselves, that's their number one you know goal, is to get more members then I, I, I think you would want more people in the workforce. Wouldn't, wouldn't that make sense? Right. You want more people in the workforce, uh, and it's becoming more and more competitive on the, on the job front so you, as unemployment continues to, uh, continues to drop. So it, uh, it is uh, uh, the, the unions that uh, outside the hospitality side, most unions, if you look at carpenters, plumbers, electricians, you know, those dollar amounts are in the, they're in the thirty to forty dollars an hour range, so uh, they typically aren't affected by this. Even on their apprentice level, they're not. So, uh, Did, but, but you're also you're also seeing the ripple effect up of you know if I make if I make fifteen dollars an hour now and the minimum wage is ten dollars or twelve dollars, when that goes up to fifteen, if I'm at fifteen, I, I want to be at eighteen or twenty because I'm not a minimum wage employee. So you're going to have that the the next level uh, you're going to have not just the minimum wage employees, but you're going to have people across the board want to make more money. Yeah, well, a lot of the wages are tied to the minimum wage. In other words, if somebody gets a minimum wage hike, that's going to affect other salaries because people, you know, they're just tied to the anybody getting a, a wage hike. It's going to have to include them as well. And, uh, yeah, like you said, it affects everybody up and down the chain for that matter. Do you, are there any municipalities that are coming out against minimum wages? I, I haven't seen I haven't seen many across the none that come to mind that uh, you know I, I'm based in Chicago Chicago did uh, increased it and that's I would rather see it on the state level than the city level because uh -huh. at least it, it makes it a even playing field across the uh, the state so you don't have people you know similar to your gas tax are you going to buy gas in Los Angeles or are you going to go to a, a suburb where the tax isn't as high Yeah well Los Angeles uh, we have a very activist uh, oriented city council and mayor. And so anything where you can put any kind of pressure on business and penalize achievement or, or business, uh, they're going to take that opportunity to do it. And I just wish that people would use a little common sense and maybe get themselves a bit of an education on how artificial wage increases uh, affects the economy and affects jobs. Uh, Rob Wilson, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on this morning.